Hey everyone, it's and welcome back to another Mushuka Tensei prediction video. This time, I promise I won't give the same prediction I gave in the previous one. I just realized that when I was going through editing. Some of you pointed it out and I was like, dang, it really, it really is the same. But no, for this video in particular, I'm going to come up with three different scenarios. Yes, three scenarios based off of a couple key points I wanted to touch on in the previous episode. This latest episode we just had. So for this prediction, I'm going to start off with the most anticipated character that I wanted to see make a return this score was Regard. Regard showed up in the end credit scene where Dorn and Aisha are now going to be under Rudius. Rudius is going to watch after him while Paul, Roxy, Lilia, um, and the rest of the party is going to go down to try to save Zenith in the Bagarit continent thanks to a letter which will be scenario number two. So for the first scenario with Regard, one of you actually brought this up in a comment. I wanted to point this out. So Regard doesn't know anything what happened to Rudius past the point where we left off in Core 1. He would likely assume that Eris and him would start a life together because he was traveling with the two of them. We could see that relationship develop and who does Rudius have on his back? Well, it's Sophia because that's who he ended up marrying. So he's going to be shocked by this. And I guess there could be a couple different ways he could take it. Uh, one being that he could be potentially mad at Rudius. Mad that he would end up not being with Eris. And that whole ordeal would be just very awkward because he never really met Sophie yet. Uh, one being, I think Rudius is going to reply to him saying that she ended up leaving me. And well, Rudius doesn't know the real reason. We, the viewer, know the real reason. But Rudius or Regard might be more inclined to be less angry by that fact. Another possible response Regard might give is, okay, so what did happen to Eris? We all, all we know is that Rudius got the letter from Eris saying she was going to leave in a bark, and that was pretty much it. Regard might think that she might be in possible trouble and he'd want to go after her because his point of being at the essentially up in the northland is to drop off uh norn and aisha so afterward he has no obligation to stay with them because he uh, uh, completed his objective so possibly a scenario if, if eris is therefore gone he might want to go track her down and find her whether we don't know where she's at. We know she's about to get slain, but there is an incredible time skip between the last scene that we saw of her. For all we know, she could be in danger somewhere, but with Gislain, I doubt that's gonna be a scenario unless they met a potential greater foe than a sword god. Likely, Rudius and Regi are gonna catch up. They're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation this upcoming episode discussing those particular things. Regi's also probably gonna tell them you know, how Paul's doing, um, how Lily is doing, how he probably will mention Roxy as well because he was down there with that group. So we got to see all of them. And I'm sure Rudius, we're going to see a ton of different expressions. Rudius and Richard both give off in their face, in their faces, just based off the different things that they're going to say to each other. Now for scenario number two with my prediction, we're going to talk about the letter Rudius got from Paul. So we know the mailing system probably is not on a day-to-day -day basis with this. I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind until I saw a comment on that. Uh, when he pointed out saying that if there's a good chance that this letter that Rudy has got from Paul was actually maybe a month or two months ago or a year ago possibly. You don't know how the delivery system works in Jabba's reincarnation. So if that was the case, we have to point out a couple things within the letter. There might have been more in the light novel and the details wise the anime gave us, but based off what the anime did give us, it seems that he does not know that Rudis is married. So we can kind of conclude the fact that he wasn't married with probably, a, a, I'd say a couple months. If I was a betting man, I would assume that Paul and that group are already down there in the background saving Zenith as we currently speak, where it is in the point in the story. Um, Rejard, Norn, and Aisha left Zanport, I want to say. And Zampor is located all the way down south. So that would mean in Reader's actual adventure, he actually went down south as opposed to going north, which makes sense. So he went backwards. He might have went back toward the Demon Continent. And along the way, he ran in with Paul. So 
that trip would probably take a couple months to get there because that's what the, the the length duration was for them to go back up to the Asura Kingdom or that territory. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually got more scenes of Paul in that group, maybe in the beginning or end of episodes. In particular, they could be shown sailing down to the Bagran continent from Zamport, and we would see Roxy, of course, who in that scene we did get of her, she looked kind of wary or concerned, though given her personality, it doesn't make... So yeah, I'm pausing the video right here real quick. During the edits, I realized the reason she looked so worried and concerned is because there is a superb, literally five feet, maybe, in front of her, and she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to act. She's... It, the, it, she, it's, it's just... It's like all of her worst nightmares are coming true at this very given point in time. Though we know, Rejord, you know, it's just... It's, I couldn't believe I didn't notice that. I am kind of surprised Lily is going down with them. At least that was the way I interpreted things. Because if Lily did not go with them, then she would be taking care of Aisha and Norn. But she did. And I don't know why she did, because she's not really a fighter. It, well, I guess we don't know if there is going to be combat, but I'm going to assume there's going to be combat when they get down to the Bagarit continent. So for prediction number three, my third scenario, which is going to be the most likely to take place and is already stated within the letter. We already saw a similar in credit reference to it where Norn does not like Rudius whatsoever. And she doesn't even care for Aisha, most likely because they have two different moms. That's going to be the most likely case and their personalities are very collidingly different. So if Norn and Rius don't get along as I assume to, then there's also going to be some tension where Norn just doesn't talk to Rudius and she's just there because Paul asked her to be in her best behavior while she saves Zenith. Norn loves Zenith with all of her heart. It's, that's blatantly obvious. So it makes sense why she doesn't have much connection with Lilia or Aisha. But as I have stated in previous predictions, yes, there's going to be some uh, relationship development between Rudius and Norn trying to get back on good terms with one another because of that. There are instances where they just have not had much. They really had barely, they barely know, even though they're, even though the two are brother and sister, they don't really know each other at all very well, given the teleportation disaster. And the times they have met, as I've recently stated, it's just been turmoil. She's likely going to run off. She's going to be fed up with the scenario. She's going to run away. Rudy, she's going to have to chase after her. And we're going to get more of that, I guess, slice of life, I want to say. Slice of life kind of vibe with it. I'd imagine Reger's not going to stay very long. I think Reger's going to possibly even leave at the end of next episode to maybe track down Eris and Gislaine or maybe go back on his journey or quest as he was doing before he ran into Paul in that group. They can continue on with the slice of life as long as they want and I know everyone's going to be overwhelmingly happy with it but for the depth of Mushiko Tensei I feel like it's not going to be it's not a true slice of life. I mean there's going to it's just a accumulation of accumulation of everything amassed within it so so that's there you have it those are my three predictions if i wanted to say something completely outlandish because i promised or i said in my last uh prediction that i was going to try to come up with a scenario that mm, would just be so outlandish it would just for the heck of it you know just because mushuko tensei is so unpredictable i'm gonna say that what should i say oh i got i got one Something so outlandish that might happen, okay, just, just let's, I'm just going to throw it out there. This is, you know, outlandish, is Bodyguardi encounters Regard while he's up there in the Northland, and the two actually square off and fight one another. It'd be Superd versus, I think he's a demigod, right, Bodyguardi. That would be entertaining to say the less. It wouldn't be anything out of Malice or Spite. It would just be more so just of a sparring match to see which one of them is stronger. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this prediction video. This is, I think this one, I think this one turned out well. I, I really do. I'm excited for episode 16 of Mushoku Tensei season 2 to see what actually happens. Maybe some stuff will happen. Maybe some stuff will not happen. But I also want to give a shout out. Non Hoshi's VA absolutely crushed it last episode. That's it. That's, and that's the end of this video. That's, that's it.